This video shows you how to measure the speed of your internet connection. It's a good idea to do this if you think that your PC is slowing down or things are not as fast as they should be. Most people immediately start to think that it's their PC and your hard disk is full or maybe there's some fault with your PC or whatever. But the simplest and cheapest way to start is to figure out if the slowness is actually something to do with the internet, such as downloading email or getting to eBay or Amazon or any other internet traffic you have, is go ahead and test your internet connectivity speed and make sure that it's what you're paying for. I'm using Baja Broadband here at home at St. George, so I'm using their test. It was easy to find this test. I just went to Google search and typed in Internet Speed Test Baja Broadband. If you're using CenturyLink, you would type in Internet Speed Test CenturyLink. And if you're using some other ISP, then it would be Internet Speed Test and then whatever ISP you're using. If you don't find one, then you can always call tech support for your internet service provider and ask if they have one. And if they don't, you can always use this one. It may not be 100% accurate, but if it's the same one you use, say, once a month and you average out those numbers, then it should give you roughly a pretty good idea of what's going on as far as your internet speed is concerned. The URL for the Baja tool is speed test dot Baja Broadband dot com. Speed test is one word, Baja Broadband is one word, and then dot com. And hopefully you can read it up here where I've highlighted it in the address bar area of the URL. Very simple test to run. There are no parameters to set. Just left click on begin test and sit back and wait. If you have any questions about the information that's presented on this screen, please feel free to bring your laptop or desktop into the St. George Senior Citizen Center Computer Lab, and we'll run this test for you. Or, if you don't have a computer or don't want to bring in your computer, we'll run the test on one of our computers and show you how it works and what all this information means. But I am going to give you some information about the results that are going to come back because that's really what's important here. The rest of the information is just kind of there if you care about it. But what we're really going to care about is what are the final numbers, and we're going to get those in just a minute. Okay, we have our download speed. Now we're going to test our upload speed. Keep in mind that you're not necessarily always going to get exactly the number that you're paying for because of a couple of things. Number one, DSL and cable connectivity is shared amongst the people we're connected to the system. Now that's nothing to be worried about because the sharing is completely secure and nobody is going to be able to see your traffic even though you may be sending it down the same pieces of wire or fiber or cable. So don't in any way be worried about using your internet just because other people are sending their information down the same piece of wire. There's no way for them to see your information and there's no way for you to see their information. It's just the nature of the way these technologies are built. The other thing to keep in mind is that your download speeds for DSL and cable modem are always going to be what they call asymmetric. And what that means, the download speed is going to be greater than the upload speed. And that's simply something to do with the way the technologies are implemented and way beyond the scope of this particular video. It doesn't tend to bother anybody because most people spend more time downloading than they do uploading. So right now we have 42.88 megabits per second coming down and 1.94 megabits per second coming up. Notice down here on the bottom, they're measuring it in kilobytes per second. I'm sorry, kilobits per second. Very important distinction. A byte is 8 bits. So, and typically if they're talking bits, they use a lowercase b, and if they're talking bytes, they use an uppercase b. So that's just a little bit of an aside there. And in this case, I know they're talking about bits because that's how internet speeds are measured. So again, just a little thing to keep in mind. We're pretty much always talking about bits when we're talking about speeds. So I'm getting pretty good speeds here, 42.88 down and 1.94 up. Now I'm actually paying for 45 down and two up. So that means that there's a few people using the network right now 
and so I'm not getting quite my full bandwidth. If I were to log on at say four o'clock in the morning, I would probably find that I'm getting really pretty close to 45 down and two up. But frankly, the difference between 45 and 42 is so small that I'm really not gonna notice it and I'm not gonna complain about it. But if I was seeing something like 20 down and I'm paying for 45 and I ran that test once a week for three weeks and got the same result, I would definitely be making a phone call to Baja Broadband trying to figure out why I'm getting substantially less than I'm paying for. There's really no more information that I can give you about this test that's going to be of much use to you. Just keep in mind that you are paying for a service and you're paying for a certain quality of service and by that I mean speeds. And so it's a good idea to periodically verify that you are, in fact, getting over time the speeds that you're paying for. And the other thing this is useful for is, again, as I said, that if you're finding things are running slower than you think they should be, when you're using the Internet, don't blame your PC first. Run a speed test. Do it over a couple of days and make sure you're actually getting the speeds that you're paying for. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop in to the computer lab at the St. George Senior Citizen Center. And if you have a laptop, feel free to bring it in. We'll help you with it, run the tests on it, or we can run the tests on our computers and explain how the test works. If you have a desktop, you can bring that in as well. You don't bother bringing in your monitor, your keyboard, or your mouse. We have plenty of those. One caveat, actually two caveats, we don't do virus removal and we don't install new versions of operating systems. Thanks for watching this video and we hope to see you at the computer lab sometime soon.